very happy to welcome to our studio today uh, a lady um, with multiple talents from St. Lucia who uh, will tell us in a little bit where she is from and where, she's, where she is right now. And, but she's just released a book. Her name is Cindy Placid and Cindy has just um, released a brand new book. We'll talk to her about that and plus her multiple talents in just a while. Cindy, welcome to Calamash TV. Thank you for having me. First of all, tell us a little bit about yourself. Who exactly is Cindy Placid? Well, Cindy Placid, oh, there's a lot to me, but <laughs> I came from the um, community of Piero in Viewfort. Um, I was born to my mother, Fortuna Benoit, and my father, which is um, Gregor Jules Mathere, which was from Grace, Laboratory Grace, actually. And um, I used to work at Cable and Wireless for the telephone company. But before I did, I was um, I was a bartender, waitress, cashier, just to name a few. So, and, and there are other talents you You didn't tell us about your writing as well, because you started writing while you were in St. Lucia. In fact, before you started working, you started writing, right? Actually, I did. I started writing at the age of, I think it was 8 to 12 years old. Everything that happened to me, every feeling, every thought, I wrote it down on paper. All right, so we'll get back to that in just a little bit, but I wanted to make a, a point of, you said you worked at, um, at the local uh, telecommunications company, and you didn't have an ordinary job there. You were a technician. Talk to us about that experience. How did you become a technician at a telecommunications company? Well, I had just given birth to my, to my first son, and I was looking for a job because I needed to take care of my family. And so um, I went to a few places. Actually, I applied first to the fire department. I didn't get through to the police force. I didn't get through. And so there was cable and wireless. And I decided, OK, I'm going to go in there and uh, apply. So when I went in there, the manager said, we only um, employ male. Only one position is for the field. And I said, OK, I'll do it. And he said, are you afraid of heights? I said, no, I'm not. And so he said, OK. Um, we'll call in a couple of days and I got the, the, end of the job. How did it work out for you? Actually, it was amazing. That was one of the most exciting jobs that I've ever had. I was able to work at, on the field with over 30 men, you know, installing cable TV and telephone and um, pulling all the cables, climbing the poles, just like the men. So it was actually a really exciting and interesting job for me. Okay, how did the, 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 the guys accept you? Was it a quick acceptance or you felt some resistance at some point in time? Actually, no. There, I mean, some had concerns as to how a lady was going to be able to handle a man's job, but I was ready. <laughs> okay, good, obviously. And you did very well. <laughs> so, Cindy, now we want to get to one of the reasons why we have you here. Um, you're, you're, you're an author, you write, you've written poems, you've been writing, like you said, from age 8 or 10. What inspired you, first of all, at that age to write? Was it a family member who was into it, or what exactly was your inspiration? Actually, I was going through a lot of things in my life at the time. I was not raised with my mom. I was raised with my dad. And so, you know, with every family, there are challenges with every situation. And so everything that I felt, every, every emotion that I was going through, I decided instead of talking about it, I used to bottle everything up. And instead of talking about it, I would write it down okay and um so at the time were you just writing it down as a personal thing or were you sharing those experiences i was not actually yes i kept it actually i wanted to be a dancer and an actor so, <laughs> <laughs> so i used to keep my poems to myself until i i think i i used to um do a lot of things in school spelling b and all kind of stuff but Writing was always my passion. And so when I got to a point where I think I, I, um, I was approached by somebody who told me about a poetry competition in, not competition, but a talent show in Castries, and um, where I, I got a chance to perform one of my poems when I was younger. And so I took that opportunity and I actually um, recited my first poem in Castries. I don't remember the name of the place though, but um, it was in Castries and that was a really good experience for me. I was about to ask you, what was the reaction like to your very first recital? It was amazing. The poem I could never forget, it was called Mwepe, 
and <laughs> that means I'm afraid. Okay, for those who do not know patois, it means I'm afraid. And I, in that poem, I express a lot of the things that I was feeling as a young woman, as a young girl, and so it was well received. So, what were you afraid of at the time? If it's not too personal, I was um, facing a lot of um, abuse. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote it down on paper and I made a poem out of it. Mm -hmm. Anything that, I was, that was affecting me personally, based on that, I wrote it down and I put it into a poem. I can't find a poem though, but. <laughs> At least you were able to express it and you were able to, 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 to get some relief from that. Yes, Did you also it was get, a form of therapy for me. Right. Did you also get therapy from, because you were involved in, in, in talent shows, queen shows and so on. Did you also get, what, did you use that as therapy as well? Yes. This was participating in shows and, you know, being among other people, being among other like, my, like myself, it gave me a lot of and out to be out of my my own space and to meet other people and talk about different experiences so it was a form of therapy and i also was an athlete before so i coupled that with queen shows and everything to just cope what was your discipline in in in, in track and field oh it kept me focused mm. were you into this running or high jumping what exactly were you into i did um, the short put, I would did the javelin, I did discus, I did um, the four by four, the I think it was the one by one, and I think I did the relays, and I did um, I think my my best performances were in the track or the long distance eight hundred meters, and the uh, um, the twenty k or ten k, however whatever they were doing at the time, I can't remember. Now, see, that was quite a lot. How did you find time? Well, I used to wake up early in the morning and run and i used to train very diligently i remember there's when i used to be by my mother's house in Cairo. there was a hill we were living at the foot of the hill and so i used to run from the bottom to the top and i used to run a lot of i used to engage myself in just going out on the in the fields and running on the road so i made time because it was it was a, cop a way of coping for me and i needed it it was necessity sorry a necessity yeah now when you left, you had one objective in mind. When you left St. Lucia to, to my grid, you had one objective in mind. You wanted to advance yourself as a writer. Um, tell us what is it that you were envisioning when you were th thinking of leaving St. Lucia um, to head to the U.S.? So when I, came to, when I left St. Lucia, I thought, oh, I'm going to come up to America and then I am going to um, be that big-time author <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to get into the... Um, probably do some acting and try to get some acting jobs and then from there go to school and then further myself in my writing. But um, it did not happen that way. Oh, so what happened? <laughs> You're keeping us in some suspense here. So you didn't get to do, <laughs> were you able to continue writing or you had abandoned it completely? What happened? There was a point I did because I was going through so much when I came up here. You know, sometimes when you come to another country, you know, you don't know how difficult it is until you get you are in that situation. And so I had to do other things to be able to 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 help myself to um, excuse me, to to help myself to, um, in my, with my economic my situation. And so um, I became a bartender. I used to bartend in St. Lucia before for Indies, but when I came up with that experience that I had, I, I went into bartending and that's to help me, you know, with my finances and, and to keep my standard of living, you know, mm. going. So your son was with you at the time? Yes, he was around four years old, my first son. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you eventually got into writing, you know, I suppose, you know, there was, there was, there were always experiences that you had that would inspire you to write. But then for your first book, talk to us about how, what, what is the process that led you to write that first book? Well, my first book, 
I had always been writing poems off and on because when I moved from one state to the other, I um, I started writing. Life was difficult, and I and I started to write little pieces here, little pieces here, not anything. And then I started to journal what was happening to me. But in 2015, I got pregnant with a little girl, and I have and I already had two sons, and so that was my dream for me to always have a daughter. She was born with a rare for um, genetic disorder called thanatophoric dysplasia. It's a rare form of dwarfism. And so, and then after was I found out she didn't have much much time to leave. She did, actually they gave her like about three days to leave. And um, she, she fought hard and she lived until she was almost three months old. And when she passed away, I, I was devastated. I felt like my world had fallen apart. I couldn't cope. A lot of things happened then. I was grieving so hard. I could not understand why I lost my daughter. And even if I'm a very spiritual person, I still could not understand why I lost her. It, I could not, it, it wasn't connecting. And so I went into depression. I went, I, I, had, I went through all the emotions. I, I went through anxieties, all holy pop trauma. And um, I started writing. I just started writing everything that I was feeling again. And that's how this book came about as a result of my grief. And it's, it's called When Life Stood in Silence. Explain to us that concept, the silence you're talking about. When, when my daughter died, a part of me died. I could not, I felt that I could not explain to anybody how I felt, how I truly felt. And so inside of me, there was a, everything shut down. My life shut down. Everything is, everything around me, everyone around me, as if they were talking and I could not hear. I could not even hear myself speak to me. I couldn't hear God speak to me. And my life was in silence. I just, I was, I used to put my first, my second son on the bus and go in my room, wake up in the morning at six o'clock, put him on the bus at 6.40, and then go back to my room and just stay in that room until he came back from school. I did that for months. I started drinking. I started self-destructing. Basically, I wasn't the lively and vibrant and bubbly person that I was. I just, my life just completely took a, a, a downward spiral. So, so that's how the silence came in. Mm -hmm. So does that book reflect um, a lot of those experiences? Give us an idea of what, we don't want to give away too much because we want people to get a copy of the book and you'll tell us in a while where the book is available. But for persons who, um, are, who will be interested in re reading this book, what is it that you want them to get from this book? When I stood in silence, I want people to, to understand that it's okay. It's okay to grieve. It's okay to express your feelings. It's okay to talk to somebody about it and not shut everybody out. And understandably, um, we're gonna have those feelings. We're gonna be have all kinds of trauma, depression and everything from our loss, but it's okay. During that time that my, um, after my daughter died, my mom died in 2018. And my youngest brother died before that. And then my auntie died and then another brother died. So all of these things were bottled into one, but I have found the strength by writing. It, it's a form of therapy. It was a form of therapy for me to help me cope because if I did not start writing, I would have not been here today. And then you went on to write a second book, which is what we're here to talk about, which is A Mighty Calm. Obviously, it would have been influenced by your previous experience in the first book. Talk to us about A Mighty Calm. How did this one come about? A Mighty Calm, it is an uprising from whatever depressive state that you are, whatever loss that you faced. It is to find your self-confidence. It seeks to empower, inspire, motivate, and to help others grow grow to their full potential, whether it be in love, whether it be in um, a career, whether it be your spiritual life, just to be able to grow from whatever you are, to find that, that power and that strength within yourself, motivation, and to be able to grow from it. 
And this book is now available. Can you tell us where, first of all, when was it launched and where is it available right now? The book was published actually third, um, March 30th. Um, and um, it is available on exlibre.com, which is my publishing company. It is also available on amazon.com, Bands and Nobles online, and soon on my, on my website at rise, sorry, rise to prosperity.com. So it's on your website, it's on Amazon and most other places where they sell books, obviously. Exlibre.com, barnesandnoble.com, amazon.com. And you can look for a mighty calm or when life stood in silence. And it's also, a, it will soon be available on my website, rise to prosperity.com. All right. So now that you've had those two books, which capture so much of your experiences in life, um, I would imagine that you still continue to write, that you are looking forward to your third book, or you're just hoping to, um, you know, have a, a, a totally different focus in that case. Actually, my third book is already completed. It was supposed to have been my first. <laughs> <laughs> but there are some issues. Um, it is so, it's, it's, out for, it's out into my publisher's hand right now. So hopefully before the year is over, that book is going to be out. And I also have another book of poems, which I'm also working on. It should be out before the year is over as well. I'm, I continually write. Wow, that's quite amazing. Um, so you know, within a year, at least this year, you will have at least two other books out in addition to our, uh, a Mighty Calm. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, so obviously, um, it's like you said, it's, it's ther writing is th therapy for you. And, um, you know, that obviously based on your experiences, you need that kind of ex escape for, for, you know, for those kinds of um, journeys and so on. Talk to us about your, your message now to our viewers based on your experience. Um, you've been through so much already and there are people out there who are hurting and going through, you know, similar ex experiences and so on. What is your message to them in terms of how they can handle and see through those, those situations? You know... Life is difficult as it is, and we all are going to face if we are not already facing some very trying times. But we cannot allow our adversities to have power over us. We are built with more strength within us than we could imagine. And we just have to find it within us, to dig deep within, to find that strength, find that courage to be able to stand, get the needed help that we need. Don't be afraid to speak to someone about what we are facing. Don't be afraid to ask for help, whether it be to write or to, um, or to help, you know, go through the process of grief. Because none of us are immune to grief, none of us are immune to adversities, none of us are immune to death. We are human beings, we are all imperfect, and things are going to happen. So we need to find it from deep within ourselves to help to grow and to foster, you know, that thing that is going to keep us moving, keep us going. And if it means that we have to go through therapy to um, overcome our challenges and to better cope, then that's what we need to do. But whatever means necessary, then we have to do that so we could continue to be a positive change in the life of others. Okay, Cindy, so when I was talking about your multiple talents, um, we mentioned a whole range of things that you've done. You've been in Queen Show, you've, you've been a technician, you've been doing so many things. But you also have a show as well where you highlight um, other writers as well. Talk to us about the TV show that you're hosting. What inspired the show? I, um, I've had that show in the back burner for about three years. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm so scared to come in front of the camera because obviously I put on a little weight and, you know, as women, we have a lot of self-conscious things about us. <laughs> but I said to myself, Cindy, you have been through so much and you have a story to tell and you want to help people. So this will be a good avenue for you to be able to help people, poets like yourself. And not only poets, like yourself, people from St. Lucia, people who have had their work just sitting in a corner and collecting dust you can bring them to the f forefront and allow them to show their work, promote them so that they too can get a chance. Who knows? Somebody may pick them up and, you know, have somebody write a book or whatever that may be. But I want to be able to help people, to be able to let people know that even if things are tough, you know, 
life is difficult, but we can, I can motivate them and encourage them to do better, to just get out of their comfort zone and just do that little, give them that little push so that they could go ahead and do better things with my, themselves. Okay, so wh while you do all of this, and we've been through most of the experiences, you've explained to us the experiences, you've, you've put them in, 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 into your books and so on. You also have a son um, who has autism as well. That adds to, yes, you know, I... the, to the experiences that you're having. Talk to us about how that has impacted your life and how are you dealing with it? Well, I have a 13 year old with, 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 with autism. He is the most amazing little boy. He, is, he has taught me to be patient. My grandmother always used to tell me, Cindy, you have patience to feed a red and with a spoon. I did not understand that until, <laughs> until I became an autism parent, okay? He has taught me so much and life has been difficult. As a single parent raising a child with autism, it has been the most trying thing for me, but it is all worth it because I, it, it, every accomplishment, it means that I have somebody else's life, you know, that I'm responsible for. I'm his voice and I have to be his spokesman and I have to advocate for him. So um, that has given me a measure of um, contentment to know that, you know, despite everything that I have been through, I am still responsible to bring that child up in a community where it seems so different for him and to help him grow. So it has been such a, a, a f fulfilling thing for me to be able to raise him with his um, autism. So finally, Cindy, um, talk to us about what is, what, what is the inspiration that keeps you handling those things, um, you handle them with so much, I mean, I can tell that you're pretty calm and based on <laughs> your, your, your last book as well, A Mighty Calm, you, you have, you've approached it with a sense of calm. What, what is, what thought that, that, that inspires you to stay calm, to handle this no matter what comes your way? I pray a lot. I am a woman with strong faith and like everybody else, everybody else, we have challenges with our faith, you know, we fall sometimes and we do the wrong things, you know, we, 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 we don't always follow what God asks us to do and then we end up hurting ourselves. But I am a, strong, a woman of strong faith and I, I have learned that my personality, being a bubbly personality, um, oh, I have a good sense of humor, so I, I keep going. I keep, um, I keep just letting that, that bubbly person that I was before, always lively, always, you know, you know, talkative and talking to people and trying to inspire people. I want, I, I let that, my faith along with those beautiful qualities that I have to keep me going. And I know that I have a family to take care of. I know that I have, I have a legacy to leave for them. So I, I, it just keeps me going. Even when I fall so many times, I know I have to get back up because not only do I have to be strong for myself, I have to be strong for my family and I have to be strong for others who need that strength and encouragement. All right, Cindy, we appreciate the opportunity to speak with you and we want to congratulate you on you know the books that you've released and like you said, there are two other books in the making which we might see before the end of the year. We look forward to that. And also, we'd like to wish you all the best if your TV show and all the other exciting activities that you're involved with. Like you said, you have a sense of humor. You like to, to laugh and enjoy life. We urge you to continue doing that and to keep blessing us with your, your writings and your thoughts and also your inspiration. So thanks a lot for speaking with us. Thank you so much for having me, Mr. Fanis. It was such a pleasure. I've been waiting for this interview and it's such, such an honor to, to be in your presence and to share that platform with you. Thank you so much.